welcome to another Local Insights video from Garrington, where we explore some of the trends being seen across the UK's regional property markets. Well, joining me today is Will Hyam from the Garrington Property Finders team, who covers client property searches in Norfolk and Suffolk. Hello, Will. Good morning, Catherine. Thank you so much for joining us. Obviously, the market reopened in England in the middle of May. What's been happening in your area these past few weeks? Um, I think the key message is that we were all slightly thrown by the government giving an announcement that the property market was going to open and gave us the best part of about 12 hours notice to get started. I think that everybody expected that there was going to be at least a couple of weeks so that preparations could be in place. The good news from a guarantee perspective is that we built up to this with knowledge that the market was going to go and open and therefore got ourselves match fit and prepared so that we're ready to look after our clients' interests as best as possible. Um, I think the key message is that there is certainly very decent levels of activity because of the, the pent-up demand that's basically been sat there behind that and therefore the opportunity for people to get back out to go and look at properties or indeed those that actually wish to put their properties on the market has happened and happened quite quickly. We uh, had a handful of clients that were under offer with their properties. The lockdown happened and essentially nothing could happen uh, during that period. And therefore, as soon as the release was there, the clients were very, very keen to try and move forward to a quick exchange. And now we're trying to time a quick exchange to completion as opposed to anything a little bit more delayed. Sure. And given what you've just shared with us, do you feel this is um, a, a blip in activity or the start of, of, of a meaningful trend going forward? It's slightly difficult to know. I, I suspect that there is going to be a new trend where people are just wanting to get on to, to move. Uh, we've had certain delays from whether it be Brexit over the last few years, the general election, again, that put the handbrake on the market. There was the release and the Boris bounce that was well known at the beginning of this year. Um, from that, then we had this period of buoyancy. COVID potentially put the handbrake on, but it's really uh, aligned our clients and sellers to actually get on. And we're seeing a number of our clients' inquiries are coming from those that are based maybe from London or from an inner city or from a large town where they actually want to go and relocate to get more space outside of the city or the town. So. I think it's tempered. Um, I think that uh, people are being very considered, but what they're wanting from their home, I think, has changed. And from sure. that, we're going to see more of a flight to the rural areas, which will hopefully build on the trend going forward. And uh, what about stock levels of properties for sale? What have they been doing over the last few weeks? Again, fr from a stock perspective, uh, and I go back to the political uh, environment that we've been in, uh, COVID, it, it's, it's certainly held back a number of sellers putting their properties to market. We've certainly seen that at the top end of the market, there are a number of sellers who do want to sell, but they're asking their agents to market it discreetly and therefore not going live to portals particularly given CV19, they don't want uh, a whole tour of people wandering around their houses. Mm. So I, I think that there's also a number of uh, people who own properties that might sit in the vulnerable category, and therefore they're actually having to sit on their hands because they're not allowed to go out physically to go and look at properties because they have to stay at home. So um, the, a summary of this is that there are... Uh, properties which are coming to market. I think that people see this as a window of opportunity. Uh, what used to be a busy part of the market, which was the Easter period from March through till May, I think the summer is going to be a busy period with a lot of completions happening in September as a target, perhaps before the schools go back. So again, it goes back to what I was saying a little bit earlier. It's being tempered. It's having a realistic approach as to how best to create a solution to sell the house and for the buyers to buy the house removing as many hurdles as possible. 
Sure, I think tempered is a, a brilliant word to use at this moment in time. Yeah. And also, um, you're in um, uh, Norfolk, Will, and yeah. given East Anglia is both coastal and rural, and that has obviously direct trains into London, have you seen a, a flight of new inquiries to this part of the UK? It seems, as you mentioned earlier, that those living in a, a, in a city or urban area are now actually wanting uh, more space, peace and quiet and fresh air. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And I think it's twofold what we're seeing here. Firstly, we're seeing the families that might live uh, in a large town or in London and have realised that what they really want from their home is different to what they have at the moment. In that, they want some space, they want a view, they want peace and quiet, they want a larger garden because the lockdown has told them that having that gives you the freedom at home. Also, we're seeing that through the fact that everybody's had to work from home and the Zoom meetings and the way that people connect um, over these mediums actually will take away the requirements to sit on a train every morning and every evening, Monday to Friday. Mm. And I suspect going forward, there still 100% will be a requirement for an office, but it will probably be more on a two to three days a week. And therefore, if it means that the longer commute um, is only done two or three days a week, then I suspect that's a price that a number of families will be willing to take sure. because the benefits of living in the countryside will outweigh the fact that the commute is certainly longer. The second part to that is, and we're seeing both for the first part and for this, a number of new inquiries coming through of those that are living in London and they need to stay in London because of schools or because actually to be within the proximity of work on a more regular basis. The bolt hole is something that we are seeing a number of inquiries for where people don't need anything palatial, but somewhere that they can lock up on a Monday morning, jump on the train to get into work and return back on a Thursday night or a Friday night to work from there remotely. Yeah, Essentially just somewhere that's, whether it's in the middle of the countryside in Norfolk or Suffolk or on the coast. But I think it's twofold on that. So it's really looking Looking at the work-life balance, whether that's actually from living in the country and doing a commute in on a more limited basis, or still living in London but having somewhere that they can retreat uh, yep. for weekends of peace. Well, that's uh, been fascinating, Will. Thank you so much for sharing those uh, insights. Um, we hope you found this video helpful, but if you would like more specific advice about the Norfolk and Suffolk local market, please do get in touch with Will Hyam by following the link shared with this video. Thank you for watching.